Right, welcome back. Today you're going to see the end of the flooring, which is going to be a huge stage for us, and also a few tips to share because we've been learning on this one. This is the first time we've used LBT, especially Click LBT. Uh, so we've used a few different tools for it, but just generally want to share how we got on. So stick around and we'll make a start. We're doing it, we're doing it. We're onto the big zone. Uh, we are on this half today. We're onto the easy stuff now. All the fiddly bits are gone. My back doesn't think it's easy. <laughs> this is one tool that we showed in the last video, but when you're trying to get the last one in, you can see here, just needs to be knocked back. It's, uh, in the past I've tried it with like a little nail puller or all sorts of contractions, but this is a great tool. Um, we bought it a couple of weeks back and we use it in endless areas. You can so see because this has been worn away. <laughs> Hook it on and give it a knock. <laughs> so with the first couple of courses done, then it becomes much easier. We of course started further on down the building, so we had to make sure we could lock in a couple to knit together to get back into the routine of having the most staggered join. What you don't really want to end up with is needing to slide a board down into a gap because it's pretty tricky. Here's a little look at how we cut the ends. You don't need a tape measure at all. Just flip the board, mark it up and then go and cut that. Jay's doing commentary on cutting. Uh, there were three or four different ways we were... <laughs> there were three or four different ways uh, we've been cutting these. Now the most simple way is to score them with a, a sanding knife and then just snap them. The finish on that isn't as good, but normally those cut ends get hidden anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but we picked up this tool on Amazon. Uh, just a simple shear. Okay. Bend and snap. Well, you're out now. Really out because you wiggled too much. This one next. No, because I haven't. Come on, chop, chop. <laughs> Kids, pick up. Now, there's two ways that you can fit this stuff. You can fit them board by board, or you can join join them all as one course and then fit them all as one. Now, Joe prefers that method. So, as you can see here, because there's two of us, that's what we did. And then when we're working alone, or my preferred method, is to get one in at a time. And that way you have to put them in on a slight angle and kind of click them in. It both have their pros and cons. And of course, if you've got the ability to do one whole row at a time, then that's fine. And that's what we did for a lot of it. It takes a bit of wiggling and then you get the odd bit popping out when you're working on the other end. But bit by bit, you kind of get the hang of it. It's one of those things that once you've done one room, you fly through the next. As you can see here, the tiddlers are back. So we are now working through the last little bits. Most of our targets on this build are based around what time we need to pick up children from school. And we managed to get almost all of it done before then, uh, but just these final few courses. And then the nice thing about using that, uh, that guillotine cutter is it's really safe. There's no dust. As soon as you start doing the long cuts with a circular saw or doing end cuts with a miter saw, you get at plastic, shards just sent everywhere it's horrible stuff to cut right bit of multitasking yesterday i was trying to finish the cedar wall which is almost there just a little bit at the end where i'm going to put a cable behind before i put it in uh, but joe got well half of the floor done we've got a little bit more to finish off up to our side uh, middle join now and then we're going to move on to the kitchen side and that's what dad and i are going to do today Now there were quite a few comments in the last episode on flooring where people talked about the expansion gaps needed and the maximum run you can do. 
as I kind of alluded to in that video, there is a maximum length you should be doing in one hit and we're a little bit over that. So we do have the option to go in and just with a router or with the blade on a multi-tool, just cut a slot in the doorway and put a threshold in there. That'll give another gap for expansion. Now around the outside, we've got loads of room for expansion. The only issue we've got, I guess, is on this center join, whether we use a trim or a sealant, there'll be a little bit of restriction and movement there. So hopefully it's gonna be a fairly even temperature and stable temperature in here. We've got MVHR units going in as well. So things should be relatively stable, but there is a chance of expansion and we wanna make sure it is allowed to expand. Also for that reason, because it's a floating floor, it's gonna be around the legs of the kitchen, especially as we've gotta screw those kitchen units down to the floor, just in case the cabin's moved and we want things to stay in place. The only thing we have done is remove the fridge, freezer out the way and appliances and we'll be putting those on top of the floor. Kitchen floor is almost done now. Just a few little bits. I'm gonna try and use up some of our offcuts just where it goes underneath and butts into the feet. Then we've got this section down here which is probably about a pack and a half which leaves three and a half packs to do the final bedroom, which I think we're just about to, gonna have enough to do that, which means we will order a different type of flooring probably for the bathroom. Still the same sort of click, LVL, LVT, v, what am I saying, luxury, LVT, uh, but probably in a stone effect. So we've left two options for the join between the two halves. So we could use a threshold trim, like a D trim, as low profile as possible, which would either be a, a feature or it would be in an oak effect. But what I'm thinking is we could get a nice bead of color match silicon in there, which would be flatter, but it also means that when we come to split the cabins, we can just run knife through that. And that should give a far more subtle join in the middle of the floor. And if it fails, then we can just go with the trim idea. The only issue with the trim is it tends to be in 1.8, two meter length. So you'd end up with joins along it, at least three, which might just be little snag points, especially if they're aluminium trims, it could be sharp. And uh, so it also might wear in a different way than the floor. I know that we've used sort of laminate nose, stair nosing before, and it's worn out. Uh, the actual coloring is worn off it. So we're gonna try and find a color match silicon and go that route to start with. Well, it's certainly not finished, but it's been a productive day. Almost finished on the cedar wall. Flooring is down. We've tied it up. We've even battled on and got right to the edges. Dad stuck around for an extra 20 minutes. We cut this last one in. Obviously, all the gaps around the outside are going to get covered by skirting now. But apart from a little skinny bit under the kitchen there, there's only one room to go. Look at this. needing beers in there. I won't show you any more of the kitchen because obviously I will try and get all of that into its own video. But, progress. Slow progress. Yeah.